Hello, welcome to the Thursday, February 11th, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Zoners Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Diary today comes from Brad, who found a cute little uh, phishing email that actually was sent to our handler email address. Yes, uh, we do get uh, normal phishes too, and we always actually love it when people send us uh, malware and phishing emails. This one wasn't really all that remarkable, just a very common social engineering technique where the attacker claims that the email arrives uh, from your email system, then asks you to either verify your identity or in this case clean up uh, your email because apparently you received too much uh, probably most of it spam anyway as usual brad walks you through what happens if you would click on an email like this including uh, packet captures of the network traffic you would observe and talking about phishing, Google published some statistics about phishing attacks that they are seeing in uh, their network. And, uh, well, most popular target, uh, the United States, followed by the United Kingdom and Japan. But part of this is also related to the overall size. Australia, for example, receives twice the number of phishing emails per capita compared to the United States. Also, having your email address being part of a large breach increases your chances substantially. What surprised me a little bit is that attackers do actually target older people somewhat more than younger people. Now, they're comparing here the age groups 55 through 64 and 18 to 24. Sort of interesting that the attackers are actually able uh, to target uh, these mass spam and phishing emails. Mobile users, interestingly, receive less attacks. So if you're exclusively using mobile devices. But then again, uh, this may also mean that you're not a very heavy internet user and uh, your email address may less likely leak as a result. And well, after a patch Tuesday, of course, we had a reboot Wednesday today and a couple of updates patches that didn't make it into yesterday's podcast, most notably, well, Adobe. Uh, no more Adobe Flash, but we still have Adobe Reader, and that was updated yesterday, including one vulnerability that is already being exploited in targeted attacks in the wild. There are a couple other updates, uh, for example, for Magento. Again, that's another uh, big target that if you're running that software in your e-commerce environment, you probably want to update it. And Apple released a security update for Mac OS. And this update most importantly fixes the sudo privilege escalation vulnerability. That vulnerability has been heavily reported about and exploits are available. So definitely apply this update. It also includes to update for the Intel graphics driver. This update applies to all currently supported versions of macOS, not just to macOS 11 Big Sur, but also to Mojave and Catalina. And of course, older versions of macOS are vulnerable likely, but no longer supported. And one thing I pointed out yesterday with Microsoft's update is that we had a couple of critical updates that basically were based on simple issues in the TCP IP stack, uh, 30 year old code still causing us issues. And that seems to be actually a little bit of a trend lately. We had, uh, for example, all these vulnerabilities in the track implementation of uh, TCP IP and now a new paper by Forescout. They're calling it number jack and they're taking a look at weak initial sequence number generation algorithms in various TCP IP stacks. Now, Forescout also released the paper with the Amnesia 33 vulnerabilities, and they looked specifically at sort of uh, IoT TCP IP stacks. The same set of TCP IP stacks was investigated again here, and the vulnerabilities are, well, uh, kind of what you would expect sort of from 20-year-old code. Uh, for example, that the initial sequence number is highly predictable. It's based on the system timer, 
actually in some of the early RFC for TCP, that was sort of a requirement. The random uh, sequence number only came later when it was recognized uh, that predictable sequence numbers make it pretty easy uh, to blindly spoof uh, TCP packets. Uh, so again, if you're running any of uh, these uh, TCP IP stacks, which you probably don't know uh, because uh, they're part of uh, IoT devices, update and well if you're unsure uh, lean on your vendor to tell you what a tcp ip stack was used in the particular device that you're using well and uh, this is it for today so thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow